اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عدد من صلى عليه وصلي على سيدنا محمد عدد من لم يصلي عليه. It is important to know Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as Shaykh Abdullah here elaborated all the favors, not all. It's not even a drop in an ocean of the favors <laughs> that Allah bestowed on creation and this ummah through our beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that's why it's important to know him. Because if you know Prophet ﷺ, you will love him. It's a simple equation. You know him, you love him. There's no doubt. Why? Because we are all, we have, our fitrah is to love perfection. We're all, we all have that innate, uh, built-in mechanism that we are looking for perfection everywhere. And wherever we see perfection, we fall in love with it. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, one of his titles is he's the Insan al Kamil. He is the perfect one in creation. The one who actually uh, raised him and uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can he not be perfect? So if you know anything, whether it is his outer appearance, about his akhlaq, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, about his realities, about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him, anything that you really look into will increase your mahabba, will increase your love in Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yani, uh, Sayyidina Anas hadith Sidi about uh, Arabi, that came and said, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Mata uh, sa'a ya Rasulullah. And he said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, three times he said, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finally answered, he said, Ma adat la, yani what have you prepared for it? He said, Ma adat kathir salat, siyam wa salat wa sadaqa, aw kama qala al-Nabi, that I have not prepared too much prayers, too much fasting, too much sadaqa. ولكن ولكني أحب الله ورسوله. But verily I love Allah and His Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, أنت مع من أحببت. You are with the one who you love. And Sayyidina Anas after that he said, the Sahaba were not, we have not witnessed such happiness. They were not as happy since the day they became Muslim. That was the the greatest happiness they've received. When they heard, Anta ma'man ahmabt. So the easiest way is to reach mahabba, is to love him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to, to be saved. These children, that isma, uh, that uh, hadith, thalathu man kunna fi dakhla wajada bihinna halawat al iman. The three things. The last one is, an yakraha an yauda fi al kufri. كما يكره أن يلقى في النار وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that he hates to go back to kufr as he would hate to be thrown in fire why لأنه ذاق حلاوة الإيمان because he tasted the sweetness so once you taste that sweetness of محبة and love especially for our children if you want عصمة if you don't want to worry about them growing up and you know, going misguided or anything, you have to let them know this Prophet and love him. So Sayyidina Ali said, مَنْ رَاهُ بَرِيهَةً هَابَ وَمَنْ خَلَطَهُ مَعْرِفَةً أَحَبَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, whoever sees him for the first time, because of his haiba, his uh, majesty, he would feel يعني, fear sometimes. But once they get to know him, they loved him. So uh, we did a, a, a nasheed about the description of Prophet ﷺ based on Sayyidina Ali's khidiya. Uh, and it has, uh, for people from the subcontinent, they love this. Uh, the Arabic, the Arabic chorus to it. بلغ الأولى بكماله كشف الدجاب جماله 
حسنت جميع خصالي صلوا عليه وآلي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسلم This is the description of Prophet According to the one whom he loved According to Sayyidina Ali The believers guardian and wali the one whose eyes, since he was a child, were filled with eternal delights from gazing upon Muhammad. بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسن جميع خصالي صلوا عليه وآله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسلم He was neither tall nor short He was right in the middle between both His hair was not straight nor curly But in between and wavy his head was neither large nor small, his face was round and light brown. This is the description of Prophet. بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وآله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسلم When he walked, he walked briskly As if walking down an incline When he turned to look at a person With his full body would turn Between his shoulders rested the seal and he is the seal of prophets. This is the description of prophet. بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسن جميع خصالي صلوا عليه وآله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله he had the most generous hands, his heart with no limits expands. He was the most truthful of people, and the softest amongst them in nature. He was the noblest of his kind, through his bloodline, the noblest in all of creation. This is the description of Prophet. كشف الدجا بجماله حسن جميع خصاله صلوا عليه وآله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسلم When they saw him at first they feared him Once they got to know him they loved him those who tried to describe him would often say about him, We have not seen, we have yet to see anyone who resembles he. This is the description of Prophet. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil awaleen wal akhirin. So this is based on Sayyidina Ali's description. Uh, how much machines do you want? Excuse <laughs> me. Can I add something? Yes. With your permission. Well, my name is Dr. Mehran. I am also. And uh, I have, uh, uh, let's say, to say, to know the Muhammad, we must thoroughly uh, study Muhammad. We cannot insert it in this small session of one hour or half hour, the okay. life of Prophet Muhammad. We cannot insert it, or we cannot see the, all the cover all the aspects no. of the life of Prophet Prince of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So, to see the best book, which was published by Ar-Rahik al maktoum ever published mm -hmm. by the Darul Salam of Saudi Arabia, 
It was by Mubarak Puri, he was an Indian scholar. And in more than hundreds of scholars in Saudi Arabia, in the time of King Faisal, it was uh, seen which is the best book, and he was awarded the prize. Prize is nothing. But the way of his style written and the perfect the aspects of the life which were covered in that book, I will suggest Allahi al Maktoum. It has been translated in many languages, let it be in Arabic, in Urdu, in English, in Indonesian, whatever the language are available. So if everybody is uh, interested to read that book, I think that would be best for him to say uh, uh, the Salam and follow the footprints of Prophet Muhammad. Yes. The doctor is saying one of the great books is the Rahid al Maktoum or Prophet. There is literally endless stream of books uh, in addressing his shama'il, awsaf, addressing his, uh, there's a, a shifa, ta'rif al mustafa There is, for one who's looking for books about Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> they're not going to uh, have a problem finding uh, books. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صل دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا اكرم سواك عين حلول الحديث العميم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير خلق كله ولي ضيق رسول الله جاءه كبير إذا الكريم متجلى باسم منتقم مولاي على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم فإن من جهدك الدنيا وضرتا ومن علومك علم اللوح وال قال مي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا نفس لا تقنطي من زلة عظومة إن الكبائر في الغفران كلما مي مولاي صل وسلم يا ربي واجعل رجائي غير منعكس لديك واد على حسابي غير من خارمي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل دعم الدعات النصارى في نبيهم واحكم بما شئت فيه مدحا واح تكيمي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل وانسب إلى ذاته ما شئت من شراف وانسب إلى قدره ما شئت من عظامي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم فإن فاضل رسول الله ليس له 
حد فايع ريبا عنه ناطق بفمي مولا يا صل فاس ابدا محمد سيد الكونين والثقالين والفاري قيني من عرب ومن عجمي مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبا على حبيبك خير الخلق كل يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسعا كرامي مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد MashaAllah, Sheikh Abdullah here covered quite a few things that uh, were also on my, my mind about the favors Allah bestowed on the Ummah through this Habib, not on, on the Ummah. وَمَا أَرْسَلَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Alam, you are Alam, I am Alam, there's Alam, there's so there's Alam Jamad, Alam al Hayawan, Alam al Dhar, Alam al Malakut, Alam al Jabarut, Kulli al Awalim. Allah says, Al Alamin, Rahmatan lil Alamin, Mutlaka. For all creation, you are Rahma, mercy. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alaykum. It is important to have these events because two things will save us today. Holy Quran, Quran Azim Shah, Allah's words, eternal. Kalamullah al Qadim, and Muhammad al Nabi Sallallahu They are Makhrunatayn, because Nabi Nabiyukum, Nabiyuna Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam, Wasallam, can a Quran and Yamshi al Allah. As Sayyid Aisha, he was a Quran. He was he was manifesting the Qur'an within him and to, he was يعني, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam his mahabba as the shaykh recited the hadith and as the verse of Qur'an I don't know if it was recited or not before I came قُلْ اسْتَعِذُ اللَّهِ قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَأَخْوَانُكُمْ وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال مقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكين ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسدين. This this verse Allah سبحانه وتعالى didn't leave a category of anything in existence that we human beings love and enjoy and seek and look for except he mentioned from wealth to children to wives and husbands to uh, homes and real, real estate he didn't leave anything he said if any of those things are dearer to you than Allah and his Prophet وسلم, then wait who is, who is threatening us? Yani when we're talking about mahabba, it's not something one to think that it is something I do, I don't do. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you don't attain that love of Prophet ﷺ in this dunya, if love of Allah and His Prophet, if you don't reach that love, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, wait until Allah's order comes. And Allah does not like those who are disobedient. Those who go astray. So it is a huge matter. Hubbun Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is not something, and unfortunately, in today's world, 
That is, the Quran is, mashallah, in the masajid, is served so greatly. You have halaqat, you have tahfid, uh, you have, uh, mashallah, it is, and it's a wonderful thing. But I think we are a bit short on the instilling the love of Prophet in, in our, in our uh, congregations, in our people. Because, I'll give you just, I'm not going to take too long because we want to hear Sheikh Shajunayn, inshaAllah. But there's a, an example, two examples in Surah Al-Hujurat about the importance of having the relevance of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu in our lives today. He's not a, a historical figure. He is Nabiullah. He is a Nabi now. He is Rasulullah now, in this instance. He is Rasulullah on Judgment Day. He is your Shafi'ah. The importance of having Understanding the relevance of Prophet ﷺ in our lives today, the importance of having a, a loving relationship built on ta'zir wa tawqir, built on respecting and honoring Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat gives two examples. Astaghfirullah, billahi ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allahi wa rasoolihi wa attaqullah, inna Allah sami'un alim. Or you who believe, don't let to means don't put anything forth forward, don't put your, yourself ahead of Prophet, don't put your opinion ahead of Prophet, don't put your family ahead of Prophet, don't put anything of value to you ahead of Prophet. He must come first. And then he goes to the second verse. And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu Allah says when Allah is saying in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, He's addressing you. Answer it. Pay attention. This is, this is khitab to you, to every believer. We deem ourselves with you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi, wa la tajhabu lahu bil qawli, ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'din, an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tashwa. O oh, you who believe, don't raise your voice in the presence of the Prophet Look, subhanAllah, Allah, how much he cares about his Prophet that he doesn't want even... This is a small transgression. When you raise your voice in the presence of somebody, it's... Yani, okay, maybe it's out of line, but it is not a big thing. Sometimes people have, like me, loud voices. May Allah forgive us. But it is, a, it is a small thing. Allah is saying even that smallest of things, raising your voice in the presence of my beloved, Rasulullah he's, he's addressing, this is, this is the Sahaba hearing this ayat in the presence of Prophet And they're being told, if you raise your voice in his presence, your, all your deeds will be erased, tahba, completely nullified. Zero. For what? For raising the voice in his presence. Ta'addub ma'al Nabi is very important. That's why you have to know his hukuk. You have to know his, his rights on you. If you don't know his rights, how are you going to have good manners? How are you going to show Imam Malik Imam Dar al Hijra, huge alim of this ummah, an alam al ummah. When he used to sit, he used, he, first of all, he would not walk with his shoes in Medina. These are people that were not, not aware of the, the relationship with their prophets, possibly. They thought he was gone, khalas. They, he would not walk in his Medina, but he would walk barefoot in his Medina. And he would take a shower every time he would sit to speak his hadith, take a shower, and he would yatatayyab, also put perfume, and he would sit. And sometimes, he would have, when, he, when, they mentioned, when the name of Prophet is mentioned, he would turn yellow. From his, from his wajd and his haiba of the Prophet. 
These are people who lived the love of Prophet Sallallahu Wasn't uh, something in the past. Now they were living it. And when they asked him about this, what did he say? He said, you think this is too much? You should see my shaykh. You should see my teacher. He said, when we sometimes would m mention Prophet Sallallahu in his name, he would shake like a leaf and he would cry profusely and non-stop until we, until we left, we said, leave him alone, let us leave this majlis. Why? Because Prophet ﷺ, they had a relationship with Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. They had ishq. That love is a bond. Is, it binds you. That's why Prophet ﷺ, أنت مع من أحببت. It's nothing from this dunya, mahabba. Mahabba is something that binds you eternally to your object of love. It's a very important and delicate thing to teach in the masajid. Two little kids, two children today. Because the opposite is true. If you don't love, if you love unholy things as well, it binds you to them as well. So Allah in His showing us that the smallest transgression against Prophet ﷺ has such a grave punishment. And you're praying, you're fasting, you're, you're, you're giving sadaqah, you're making jihad. And then you come one time and you raise your voice in the presence of Prophet. Erased. One time. The smallest of the crimes have such great... What if, what if now, and, and this, is, this is something, we have to teach the rights of our Prophet so that we don't fall into bad adab with our Prophet When his hadith is mentioned, when something in his seerah is mentioned, you find people lightly, lightly dis discredit, oh, I don't accept that, oh, that my opinion doesn't like it, oh, I... ajeeb. If you can't raise your voice <laughs> in his presence, what about these crimes? The opposite of this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladhina yawduna aswata inda rasulillah ulaika ladhina mtahana allahu kulubahum lit taqwa lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun amin. And he, Allah is teaching the believers, show respect to this beloved Habib of mine. He's, he's Habibullah. Show respect and look what I give you. He's saying, those who lower their voice, how, again, the voice, lower the voice, how simple an act. And he, when the Sahaba come in front of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and they, they sit with Adab and they speak with low voice in his presence. Allah certifies them. They, they are Adqiya. Not uh, those who made jihad, those who, who made the uh, charities, those who pray. They lowered their voice. In the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad. Adqiya. We all want taqwa. You reach taqwa, khalas, alhamdulillah, you are saying. For what? For lowering your voice in his presence. Showing a simple show of respect. A simple show of honor. You come in his presence and you lower your voice. Lahum maghfira wa ajrun azim. Forgiveness, on top of Allah certifies them as muttaqi. Forgiveness and ajr azim. Ajab al ujab. Ayat fi surah al hujura. It shows us how we have to be with our Prophet. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا You have to, they say, uh, تُعَزِّرُوهُ أي to, uh, 
عظموه يعني تنصروه مع التفخيم the grandeur and in the beginning of uh, the surah that we, we, we recited اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد ذات اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه The important, the point that I'm trying to make here that we learned from our teachers is that محبت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is essential for having a real spiritual life If we want to have a mechanical uh, religious life a religious life that is like a merchant I, I, I clock in I do my exercise and I go home and uh, no, no mahabba no khushu no taqwa no يعني this is something it's a wasted life if we live it like this so it is important if we want to have a real dhawq, a real spiritual life. Halawa al iman. Halawa, halwa, Prophet ﷺ. He's describing it with the sweetness. If we want to have a real halwa, real spiritual life, not halwa for our bodies, but halwa for our souls and hearts. Sweetness for our our ruh. If we want to have that, we have to make Prophet ﷺ relevant in our lives today. Today, we have to be conscious of his role in this ummah, the importance of his mahabba. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's so much to say about this. There's so much to say about his importance. This whole creation, yani when 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 you go in the grave, I say the Anas. There's one hadith uh, in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, where he, he says, uh, when you, when, I'll, I'll translate it with, so that we don't take too much time. When, you, when they put the, servant, the slave in his grave and the people leave and he hears the qara, the sound of their shoes leaving, two angels will come. In this hadith, in this narration of Sayyidina Anas, then, Atahu uh, Malakaini. Two angels will come to him, they'll seat him up, and they will say to him, مَا تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا رَجْمِ محمد. One question. Nothing else. No other question in that uh, narration. What do you say about this one, this messenger, Muhammad? What do you say about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? One question. All of this to show the qadr of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What about... That what the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdullah talked on Yom al mahshar when all nations stand and run to their prophets and, and then come to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All this to show what? Allah is showing the qadr, the status of His Prophet to all of creation. What does it mean when they go to all the messengers and prophets and everybody say, Ya Islam? All this is happening for all to see the qadr of this Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us understanding, give us hub, muhabba of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, grant us tawfiq to have good manners with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make us real ushak, fill our hearts with his muhabba. Because if you love Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you love Allah. There is no separation. Ahibbuni, ahibbullah lima yaghdukum min ni'ami, wa ahibbuni lihubbillah. There is no separation. If you love Prophet, it will lead you to Allah's love. If you love Allah, you must love Prophet.